My name is Alke Plantega, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how to use Excel and matrix algebra for calculating the standard deviation of a portfolio of stock returns or any other risky assets. A brief overview of this video. I will start with explaining a little bit about the algebra. Second, I will address how to implement it in Excel. And finally, I give you a reference to where you can find the files that I'm using in this video. Typically, when you want to calculate portfolio standard deviation in Excel, you probably already kind of know a little bit about the topic, so I'm not going to discuss a lot of that in detail. But you know, the standard deviation of portfolio returns of a particular uh, portfolio of two stocks can be easily calculated as the square root of the weight of the first stock squared times the variance of the first stock plus the weight of the second stock squared times the variance plus two times the weight of stock one times the weight of stock two times the covariance. This is a well-known formula that you can find in almost any finance textbook. So if you want to write that in matrix notation, you would take the square root of a row vector of portfolio weights times the covariance matrix times a column vector of um, portfolio weights. And so the apostrophe here indicates essentially that we're talking about a row vector. The covariance matrix is a square matrix in this time with dimension two by two. And uh, W is again a column vector of portfolio weights. In a similar fashion, we can write, of course, the standard deviation of a portfolio with three stocks. So that will give us a third term with the squared of the weight times the variance of the third stock. And we get two additional covariance terms uh, and these are presented here and over here. Well, to write this problem for five stocks, you know, we end up with this formula. Uh, actually, a lot of terms here. So we have five terms with the weight squared and the variance, and then we have like 10 covariance terms. So that's quite a lot. And yet, still, the matrix notation is like this it is still row factor of portfolio weights, covariance matrix times a column factor of portfolio weights. So you can imagine that, you know, with 10 or 20 or 100 or 1000 stocks, uh, the advantage of this matrix notations, with, which remains unchanged, gets increasingly uh, stronger about essentially this representation. So yes, it is a smart idea to use matrix notation. And it is even more smarter because we can use matrix notation almost directly in Excel. For instance, in order to calculate the standard deviation of portfolio returns using matrix functions, we need to use the so-called matrix multiply function from Excel. And that's a function with this syntax, mmmult. And it has two input arguments, range 1 and range 2. Um, at the same time, this creates a sl small problem because since matrix mult only handles two arguments at the same time, we actually need three because, you know, we have portfolio weights, covariance matrix, portfolio weights. And in order to implement that in Excel, we need to nest them. And one way to do that is to have matrix mult range one times matrix mult range one range three, sorry, range two, range three. So essentially here we have a second matrix mult function that has an outcome of one range. And so we get again, get one range and one range. And so um, if we merge that all together, we need to start with a row of portfolio weights. This will be the covariance matrix, and this will be a column of portfolio weights. If you want to know more about uh, matrix multiplication, matrix and uh, multiplications in general, you know, and, and uh, the requirements for that, I have a separate video on that. So just accept it as it is here. 
So here I have an example of a covariance matrix and four different stocks. And I also have a portfolio one here. And that portfolio has 10% invested in stock one, 30% in stock two, 25 in stock three, and 35 in stock four. And now I want to calculate the standard deviation of this portfolio. And I need to start with a row vector. And for that reason, I start with the transpose of this vector. Essentially, I change a column vector into a row vector. So the outcome here on this line is now a row vector of portfolio weights. And then I start the nesting, I start the next uh, matrix multiply command, and I select the covariance matrix over there. And I end again with the column vector of portfolio weights. And now I need to close with three closing brackets, and this will give me uh, the standard deviation of the portfolio. As always, I conclude a matrix function or an array function in Excel with Shift Control Enter. I change the formatting slightly. And you can see that I get a standard deviation of 28.8%. So, right. What you also see in this example, of course, is the power of diversification. The portfolio has a lower standard deviation than even the lowest single stock in this example. So, and if you want to do this analysis for a second portfolio, you could, of course, drag the formula to over here, but then you need to be careful with putting the dollar sign for fixing the references to cells. So if you want to do the calculations for portfolio two with exactly the same covariance matrix than one, you need to put the famous dollar signs over here. And then now you can essentially drag it to here and you see we get a portfolio with an even much lower standard deviation. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Um, and let me say that I'd like to conclude with this slide, you know, if you want more information on working with matrix algebra in Excel to implement, in to implement calculations in portfolio theory or risk management, you can consult my website. Um, so the address is over here and you can also find the Excel files uh, that I use in the videos. Thank you for watching.